Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, how I hate Blue Monday. Got to work like a slave all day. That's a black monkey. He'll come to San Francisco. Yeah, all right, I'm back here and I didn't leave my heart here, let me tell you that. I could do without it. The meanest city on the earth is San Francisco. Stupid, mean, liberal, hateful. The backwater of America. Welcome to the Savage Nation. I can't say I left my heart in New York City either, but I am back where I live right now. I'm permanently exiled in San Francisco. Back from New York City. little flight scare on the way back, which I'll tell you about how prayer works. We'll talk about Hillary Clinton's email, E-Gate. 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 Hillary Egate. We'll talk about Trump on the illegals. We'll talk about a so-called Republican consultant. I swear to God, I was appalled. A, a, a GOP consultant to show you how hateful the Republican Party is and how out of touch they are with reality. Some fool named Alex Castellanos laid out a plan to take down Trump, and they, he said he should be removed the way Brutus took down Caesar. Get close to him, then shiv him in the ribs. We have that sound. I'm not making any of this up. It's all real. So we got that. We got the European Islamists. Remember that? You forgot that already? The Moroccan Muslim who had an AK-47 and a knife on the train. Not snakes on a train, but Islamists on a train. And three American servicemen took the vermin down. And he said, give me back my gun. But wait, I will tell you what his lawyer said, and your hair will stand up. All this and more on the Savage Nation but first, I want to begin with something not related to the Dow being off about 600 points in a day, because there's nothing I can do about it. Secondly, I'm not invested in the stock market. Uh, and thirdly, we'll talk about finances with Chris, I'm sorry, with Craig Robert. Oh, I'm getting so ahead of myself. Craig Smith of Swiss America, my good friend, and he's advertised on my show for over 10 years. I want to hear what he has to say about this collapse in the stock market. I want to know what he has to say. It's that simple, because gold is down as well. I want to know what he has to say about that. So, last night I watched Ray Donovan. I like the show. Now, even if you don't get HBO, I've talked about Ray Donovan before. And Ray Donovan last night was about child molestation by a priest and the effect it's had on Ray Donovan, who's a real tough, macho, sort of private eye. But he's uh, covering up the scars of the priest having molested him as a boy. But the same priest molested his other brothers as well and they show what the molestation has done to each of the boys as they are adults the effects that it has had on all of them so it led me to ask this question of my audience which i'm asking you right now on the savage nation were you molested as a child were you molested by a priest as a child were you molested by another uh let's say authority figure as a child how did it affect you and how does it affect you now? This is the kind of lifestyle question that I like. I find it more interesting than talking only about the news. I mean, the news is interesting. We can only go so far. But I think talk shows have the ability to go deeper and drill down more deeply into the human condition than just uh, talking about the news. So, I mean, if Ray Donovan's you know, theory or theme, rather, is the effects of long-term molestation on, an, uh, on a child and then as a man or as a woman, I'd like to know how you have been affected by child molestation and how it affects you now. This, of course, mixed in with the Hillary email cover-up. Now, I don't know if it's related. I'm not suggesting in any way that this has anything to do with molestation. I just, you know, it's interesting to me. It's that simple. So let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to Hillary's uh, email scandal. Here is one of her spokesmouths, someone who shouldn't be working for another second, someone who should be working in a McDonald's in Arkansas, if at all. Jennifer Palmieri stumbling and mumbling over the deleted emails on CNN. Listen to 24 and 25 on the Savage Nation as she covers up for Hillary. She had her, um, she had, what happened was State Department came to all the former secretaries of state last fall to ask for 
to ask for whatever records they may have because they realize that um, uh, they didn't beca because uh, you know because not just uh, Hillary Clinton but other secretaries of state had used personal email they may not have captured everything. What? So she had she asked uh, her lawyers to look at this so that she had some legal minds on the case to see which emails were State Department and which were personal and uh, turned over the State Department once. She decided because uh, she didn't I mean it's, these are these are personal emails and I think everyone understands that even Hillary Clinton gets his own of privacy and she decided that she uh, she retains a couple months worth of emails so you can you know so she can uh, uh, find you personal believe what you're that listening she needs to? to but after that uh, that she doesn't need them anymore so you know she made this decision oh. I think is uh -huh. obviously you know she was former Secretary of State so we want to make sure that people understand uh, how she handled classified information when she was Secretary of State that she was very careful with it she didn't deal with it oh, online really? she dealt with it in hard copy in meetings not on uh, not on the computer all right. Th this would be president. This would be president took secretive in emails, and now we're hearing that they're all personal emails. Very important story. Now I promised you another soundbite right out of the gate, which I'm going to give you, which I couldn't believe. A moron, in my opinion, an absolute moron, or shall I say, an idiot, a moron, imbecile, idiot. I don't know which words are allowed anymore. I would say this GOP consultant Alex Castellanos goes on Bloomberg News and lays out a plan to take down Donald Trump's Donald Trump by saying you should do it how Brutus killed Caesar. Get close to Donald Trump, then shiver him in the ribs. This is the Republican establishment at work. This is the same establishment that shivved America in the ribs. This is the same establishment that gave us the drunk John Boehner, the chicken farmer uh, with the gullet McConnell, who stabbed us in the back after we put him in power. Listen to this GOP consultant on how to take down Donald Trump in clip number one. The best thing to do is the way Brutus killed Caesar. Get real close, snuggle up, and shiv him in the ribs. Right. In other words, hug the message, but not the shiv messenger. The we understand your frustration, America. We know why you hate right. Washington. Michael You're Savage to Alex Castellanos drop dead. Alex Castellanos, thank God we know who you really are now. You are a GOP consultant. You exemplify everything wrong with the Republican Party. I would say you're ashamed to the Republican Party, but that would be a lie. You are the Republican Party. 855 So on the way back from New York, I was flying. I'm going to show you the power of prayer for a minute. And I want you to understand this is as real as it gets. And I want you to show how, how naive and innocent I actually am on the inside. I'm flying back smooth flight in a friend's plane. I'm relaxing, sleeping in a seat. And somewhere outside of Denver, the planes, after flying flat like a railroad car, the plane starts to shiver and shimmy. Now, the night before, admittedly, for some reason, I had a perverse sense of fun. I was watching a TV show on uh, how, how jet planes crash and famous uh, jet crashes and reconstructions. I knew that I shouldn't have, but I did. So after about three hours of flying, the plane starts to shimmy and shake and then really shimmy and shake, then really shake and shimmy. And here's what happened. Prior to this happening, I was speaking with my son. And I said, you know, son, I've lived a lot longer than I thought I would. And I said, it's both a blessing and a curse. And my son said, no, dad, it's a blessing. And I just shrugged. Okay. Plane starts to shimmy and shake, shimmy and shake. I jump up out of the seat and I say, God, please, I meant it's only a blessing. Please, I meant it's a blessing. I meant it's a blessing. As, as God is my witness, the minute I finish that prayer, the plane stabilized. So, all right, so you say, God li listened to your prayer and answered your prayer. Well, did he? I don't know. Well, it's true we went through the Rocky Mountains and maybe coincidental to that, the plane came out of the rough air over the Rocky Mountains and it just settled down. So I went and talked to the pilot about it, and he smiled, and he said, well, I believe everything is predetermined. I said, you mean you don't have free will? He said, well, I believe in free will as well. I said, well, which is it? Is it, is it predetermination or free will? He said, it's both. I said, well, how do you deal with this every day as a jet pilot who's, who puts his own life in his hands and the, the lives of passengers? He said, I take every day as it comes. So I go back to my seat, and I say to myself, either I'm very naive or God answered my prayers. But the fact of the matter is, it was so coincidentally associated, what difference does it make at the end of the day? So I have faith, you see, my friends. I want you to understand this, I have faith. 
I actually have faith in a God in heaven who actually looks over me. I've seen it happen several times in my life. This was not the first time. And I believe God answered my prayers. It's that simple. Now, I don't know if you want to call on that or say, yes, God's been good to you or God answered your prayers because it'll start to sound a little hokey, but that's what happened to me. And that's the opening of the Savage Nation, and I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I want to show you something. I come on the air. I gave you six topics. The power of prayer molestation as a child and its effect on you now the hillary email cover-up trump uh being told by a gp consultant the way to take him down is to shiv him in the ribs uh european islamist lawyers lying about him the lawyer said by the way that the muslim who wanted to go berserk on the train until he was taken down by american troops he said he found the ak-47 in the park and he was not a terrorist he was only going to rob the passengers the same excuse used in San Francisco to defend the illegal alien who killed Kate Steinle. And to this day, no one has explained why the federal agent who lost his gun or her gun has not been fired, by the way. So that's the new new excuse now for murderers by, murders by illegal aliens is they found the gun under the toilet. Anyway, take a guess what the board's loaded up with. Of all those topics, abuse... Carol, WABC, tell us your abuse story quickly. Michael, I'm 66 years old, and in 2009, at the age of 60, memories came up that I had been sexually abused by my father. I was adopted. I had no clue that this had happened. I had always adored my father. Um, oh, wow. There's a lot of facets to the story, but the bottom line is, Michael, um, after my adoptive father died in 1976, I was kind of on a fast track to a singing career uh, classical music. I'd studied in Europe, and about seven months after he died, my life fell apart. I had a horrendous eating disorder. Obviously, you know, you can't sing an audition when that happened. I lost Wait, You're saying that all of this happened after he died, and you think it's related to the fact that he molested you when you were a kid? Yes, because what they, um, experts say that up to 85% of people who do suffer bulimia um, do so because of childhood sexual abuse. I saw patterns of dating, the same old pattern of dating people that were not available to me, and I just clung to them. I mean, it was, it's a sad, it, it's sad in relationships, what I had. I can look back now. Do you feel, do you feel knowing all this has helped you? I mean, you over it, or it's with you forever? No, it's not with me forever. The, um, the memories came up, and with that also came a memory that I was... Uh, strangled when I was young. I will not attribute that to my father. I do not know, but the memory came up. And the memory, um, the, the, what happened to me... Wait, wait, let me interject here. When you say the memory, were you in therapy and they were trying to encourage these memories, or did they spontaneously arise in your consciousness? Okay, yeah, it was... It was I believe it was the freedom of being with someone who was professional, who was there for me, and I no, no, but you're not answering my question. Were you in professional counseling when these molestation memories came back? Yes, and no one... Now, he, I, have to, I have to slow down here because you know and I know a lot of therapists will encourage this kind of thinking and it may not be real. I'm trying to say, uh, Michael, that no one encouraged. In fact, I asked my therapist, I said, some things are coming, I'm get, feeling uncomfortable. Uh, there were some things I said, is it possible that I was molested. She said, that will, if that happened at all, you, it will come up. She discouraged it. She did not say a word about it. She didn't want All right, to because a lot of them, a lot of them for, for many years were encouraging this. Everyone on earth said they were molested by their father. Every woman suddenly hated men because of the craziness in the therapy world. I don't hate men at all. And no, I'm not saying this is a very different, what you're saying is a very common belief I know what happened, and trust me, if you... Right, no, I hear you. I'm yeah. not trying to challenge you. I'm trying to understand you. So you're following up on my, my statement that this... The, did you see the Ray Donovan show about child molestation last night? God, I wish I had. 
All right, well, anyway, it's about what priests did to these uh, four boys when they were kids in Massachusetts, and each one of them was mutilated by this priest in life later on. One becomes a tough guy, one becomes a soft guy, one becomes a boxer, uh, and the other one becomes, like, numb, all because the priest molested them. It had that a deep effect upon them. Thanks for sharing uh, that horrible story, Carol. That opens up one line at 855-497-282. Let's go to Lee on WFTW Radio. Lee, go ahead. What's on your mind? Yes, I was calling Dr. Savage to just encourage you to continue to share that soft side of yourself, talking about prayer. I grew up in a very conservative Southern Baptist environment. I'm now 56 years old. I, I, I cannot tolerate going to church. It is all so fake and foreign and not true, and it just drives me crazy. I tried to go last night, and I, I got up and left. I couldn't take it. Well, what is it? Um, In other words, they don't say anything that moves you? It's all double talk? That's correct. And the way they... So, but wait, wait a minute. But you still believe in God. That's what you're saying, aren't you? Yes. I still believe in God, and I still help people every day. We have tons of homes. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say to you. I don't think a person needs to go to a house of worship. God bless you if you do to know God. You can know God without going to a house of worship, or you can go to a house of worship and not know God. I think it's a relationship between man and God rather than between man and the house of worship. Yes, I agree. And just, you know, you're so right on with the things that you say are the truth, that, the, that I know are the truth. And then when well, you all I'm saying is I made a little prayer and the plane then stopped shaking. And I was sure God heard my prayer because I wanted to live. And I had, I swear as God is my witness, I truly believe that we have the power of life and death within ourselves that we can literally self-actuate. And I don't mean it'll happen that second, of course, unless you jump off a building. I'm not talking about that. I mean we have the seeds of our own destruction within us. We can, we can trigger that pathway or we can decide to live. And I say, therefore, choose life. Therefore, choose life. We have that power within us we can do the same for the nation as for ourselves we can make america live again if we'd all understand that we have the power to do so after all these years of this atheist cursing america and i'll say it again he hates america he has cursed america join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 savage well, I'm sorry to report that the president is uh, back from vacation. Things were better before he came back. It's almost as though the stock market reacted to his arrival on the scene. I only wish that he bought a house in Martha's Vineyard and became the mayor of Martha's Vineyard and stayed there. But he's back. And the first act of the president is not to take on ISIS and to stop them from their rape and their enslavement and blowing up monuments and killing people. It's to fly to Las Vegas and give a speech on solar energy to pay back his investors. I mean, his sponsors or whatever they call them, donors. They're called investors. You call them uh, donors to a campaign. They're investing in him. He's got to pay him off now before they, he leaves office. He's got to take a job as the head of an energy company, maybe, after the, the eight years of wonderful work. But that's not what I want to talk about. We're talking about stuff. I knew this molestation thing would touch a raw nerve. And that's why I brought it up, because if I'm watching a show like Ray Donovan, and I see that even uh, you know HBO is covering this, this is obviously a much bigger issue uh, than uh, meets the eye. And I think a lot of people are scarred by this. And I knew that they'd want to tell their story. Now, insofar as it's interesting, I'll run it, and then we'll move on to the news, such as Hillary Clinton campaign scrambling to control damage from the ongoing email server investigations. I mean, they keep lying about it. Rocky press conference last week. She sounded like a fool. She made a joke that went over like, let us say she would go over a, uh, uh, I try to make it a, a classy thing. I mean, her joke went over the same way she would go over a, uh, forget about it. Frustrated Clinton allies are admitting that her campaign's earlier attempts to stonewall uh, and call it a partisan witch hunt didn't work. It just didn't work. In fact, it's so bad that they're bringing up a loser like Biden to enter the race. Now, you and I both know Biden is a complete and total loser. He cannot win. Impossible. I don't care how many illegals he floods in from Mexico or Somalia. He cannot be elected. The man is absolutely a doofus. He's not getting elected. If he runs against Trump, you know what, what the results are? 75-25. If the communist from the gutters of New York runs, 
Sanders. America doesn't like Bernie Sanders. Classical New York socialist. They hate him. Oh, he's drawing big crowds where? University towns. Big deal. In the big picture, Bernie Sanders against Trump, it's 95-5 or 90-10. I pray to God that they run by, and that's all I can say to you. Then maybe you'll be safe again if we, if we finally get rid of the, the Democrat socialist regime. I want to talk about prayer one more minute because I grew up in a family that was not particularly religious, but I know that they always knew God was in their life and over, overlooking everything. And I remember overhearing from family members about what happened in World War II to two distant relatives. One was in a foxhole with two other men during a shelling in the Arden Forest, I believe. His name was Danny. And this story spread through the family after World War II. I was a little boy. And they said Danny was in a foxhole during a heavy shelling, and they were told not to get out of the foxhole. Danny heard his mother's voice saying, Danny, 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 get out of that foxhole. Get out, get out, get out. He got out. He ran somewhere, and a shell hit the foxhole and killed his two friends. So I heard that one. That was one. As a little boy, remember, as a little kid, here's another one. Absolutely what I heard. Another cousin, distant relative, was somewhere on the, uh, Euro in the European campaign, World War II, his mother had given him a small Bible to carry. He carried it all through any battle he had been in, inside his chest pocket, left side. They swore to me that a bullet was fired, hit him in the Bible, didn't kill him. The Bible acted as a whatever, you know, a shield. I heard that story. Now you say, well, what about all the men that carried Bibles that were blown up and never seen? I don't know about them. You see, here is the problem with being overly rational. It's like the story of Eve. She ate of the uh, tree of knowledge, and she lost faith in God. There's a point at which too much knowledge destroys man's spirit. Now, does that mean we should remain ignorant? I didn't say that. All I can say to you is that man sometimes is too smart for his own good. That's what I'm trying to say to you. There comes a point, in my, in my, in my opinion, I know many bright people who don't believe in God, and they're my friends, but I'm not one of them. They ask me how I, as a rationalist, being as intelligent as I apparently am, how do you actually believe in God? I said, how do you not believe in God? Would you create yourself? They don't have an answer for that. And then there's the other line that I always use is, I love the atheists who say they don't believe in anything. I said, well, you believe in nothing, therefore you believe in something. So in other words, everybody believes in something. And I'm just gambling that there is a God who's going to judge me when I die. And that's it. That's the whole story. So there, I have this childish outlook on life and on God. And I believe that uh, there is a great creator. You know, I said this to another one of my relatives the other day, that as Einstein in his last years was asked, does God exist? And Albert Einstein said the more he studies the out limits of the universe, the more he realizes that it's, it couldn't have been created by chance. There has to have been a divine inspiration, a divine creator, rather. It could not have happened by chance. So you know what? I'll trust Einstein's view of the universe rather than yours. WBAP Jim is calling on the molestation as a child issue. I really want to hear from someone about how it affects you now. That's really what I want to know. That's what I really want to know. Is like, Does it still affect you now? WABC, Anna, go ahead. Tell us your story. Hi, uh, um, I was... Um, Anna, Anna, hold it. Speak rapidly, please. We, we have limited time. Okay, I was molested inside a church. It was not a church. Uh, it was not a Catholic church. I was an adult, but it, that was about 20 years ago. And um, I, um, I went through major cycles of anger and in and out of a mental institution for about four years. But Anna, who molested you? You said a pastor molested you? Yes, it was a district pastor. He was not paid. Okay, we had several different district pastors um, because there were people coming from... Are you sure he molested you? You said you had mental health issues and wound up in, 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 a, in a treatment facility. Are you positive it happened? Oh, I know. I no, 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 no. I, I, I was in and out of a mental institution after it happened because of the rage, the outrage I had. Because when I went to the, to the founder and president and uh, senior pastor, they, uh, they denied, delayed, distracted, and denounced me. Right. They, they denounced you. You were lying. They were saying. 
Exactly, and they also told the whole congregation that if anyone speaks negatively about anyone in their church, that they should tell me that I am in sin and that I need to forgive. And because, Wow. Because, you talk about organized religion. This sounds like organized molestation. Exactly. Well, it was a, it was a very, um, what's it when they don't like, misogynist. It was a very misogynist church. However, uh, Okay, I, so you went through the, all of the, are you better today? Did you, did you get over it? Uh, did I get over it? Uh, you, I got to tell you, because they were Christian and they should have known better, how can I get over it until, if had they had said to me, okay, Terry, Anna, we see that this has happened to you, and we will do whatever it takes um, to find out the truth, to get to the truth. And but they didn't do that. They covered it up like the church did in those days. That, that is exactly what the problem was. And because they didn't do that, and if this man had apologized to me, it was he did not rape Where, where is this pastor today? Is he still alive? Unfortunately, he's be just about in the same town that I am now because he moved his church. And the district oh, pastor... Wait, wait, he's still alive and he's still there and you've never confronted him? I, di I tried to confront them over a six-month period, but like I said, they kept de delaying, denouncing, distracting. No, no, have you personally thought I, of going I, up to him? I first went up to him many, many times, and he totally ignored me. In fact, I was working for him inside the church, and that's why it happened. Oh, boy, this gets exactly. crazier. So you're saying you're still, you're still affected by the molestation? Yes, I am. Now, I am... I'm sorry to hear it, and let's move on. Uh, okay, terrible. Ed, WABC, what are you calling on? What's the issue, Ed? Uh, doctor, I was blown up in 1967 to, to show you about prayer. Uh, in the blast, I said, oh, my God, I'm dead. Wait, wait, stop, stop. How were you blown up? Uh, I had a mine go off behind me. Where, where, in Vietnam? Vietnam, yes. Okay, you're walking, mine goes off. What happened? I'm getting feedback, by the way. Someone's not working the board properly, so I can hardly hear you. I hear my own voice. All right, start again. You were walking. A mine goes off. What happened? Uh, in the blast, I said, oh, my God, I'm dead, Ma. I went into a tunnel. An angel appeared in a tunnel, bright lights in a tunnel spinning. The angel got there, started going real fast. We came out into a sand dune forest. All sand. On the left, there was all nothing but pine trees. On the right, dunes. We let walk about 30 yards to a stream. We lay down in a prone position. The angel's talking to me. I'm answering yes and no questions. Uh, crystal clear water, and uh, about 25, 30 yards from us, this is who I perceive to be God, Jesus, and the Virgin Mary. He says, stay here. He floats over, talks to them. They're looking at me. Come back. Lays down in a prone position, says, they're not ready for you. You can stay or you can go. I said, can I come back? I woke up in the battlefield. And why I'm telling you this story, because I was never a religious person. I think churches have outdone themselves. you got to believe within your heart there is a God. And if you believe that, you got no problems. Anyway, thank you so much for your No, no, Ed, don't go. Ed, Ed, please. Are you still on the line, Ed? Yes. Ed, is God still with you all these years later after that experience? Absolutely, but I've never seen him or the angel since. But you feel that at that moment that that mine went off, you could have been taken, correct? Oh, I was dead. I, I, I didn't come back from that journey for, for a half hour, and I just found that out last year, how long the time was, I was out. Was and what about the, how long did it take you to get over the injuries? Ah, uh, doctor, I'm not, you never get over them. I got holes all over the place. Okay, so you were seriously injured and easily could have died from your wounds. Well, Ed, all I can say is nothing. I'm I'm speechless other than to say I believe every word you just said. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. How we're talking about God and uh, the effects of abuse is very interesting to me because they're interrelated. When you think about the number of children who had been maybe still are molested by religious figures. Now, who are these religious figures? They wear the vestments of um, purity. The vestments tell a child that they're different than other people. They're safer than other people. They'll, uh, they have a direct communication to God. So the child trusts them. So they take God's power and they use it for the worst possible thing you can do to another human being short of killing them, which is killing their soul. 
And so they are related stories in a strange way. And I, I don't know whether you want me to stay on this. You want me to do the Islamist in England. You want me to do uh, the Hillary email cover up. Trump on illegals, the European Islamists. I'll do it all on the Savage Nation. Uh, whichever you want to do, the phone number is here for you. WABC Will, welcome to the Savage Nation. How are you? So um, you're talking about God, and that's what I'm going to talk about um, for years, about 20 years. Uh, I, I'm a recovered alcoholic and crack cocaine addict. And for 20 years, I had drank and drugged everything that I'd ever had. I was like the guy that you would see on that show, Intervention. My whole family gave up on me. They just said, we'll probably die. And, um, you know, I went to institutions and rehabs and um, tried a million different ways to get sober. And I just figured there's just some people that just are born that way. They can't do it. And um, somebody told me that, you know, you have to pray. And you have to ask God. And not just some foxhole prayer. You have to. So, what are you saying you prayed to God and you were saved? He asked me to pray to God, and I would be saved. And I told him I'm not a bend-my-knees kind of guy. I don't, I don't bend my knees and pray to God. He said, it's not about bending your knees. It's about bending your will. And uh, uh -huh. remember... Uh, that's a very, very interesting statement that you just made. It's the false pride that kill, kills us. My first, my first prayer was, God, don't let me drink today. And I didn't yeah. drink that day, and I couldn't think about anything else. And for days, I would pray the same thing, and for years, I would pray the same thing. And my mother-in-law was the only person who never gave up on me. You know, would always stand by my side. And even my own wife, even her daughter, packed the bags and left. And it well, was I'm interested. You know, I'm interested in your call, Will, for a couple of different reasons. One, because it's interesting for others listening to the show to hear this, who are struggling with drug abuse or whatever it may be unable to control themselves and they're cynical and they're willful and they don't want to believe any of this. They think it's all for children. Have you been sober for how many years now, rather? I've been sober for seven years. And, um, you know, at one point I said, a couple years later, I said I, I was talking to a friend and I'd always broken. I'd always wound up going back out and drinking. And I'm like a Houdini. I disappear for weeks. I, you know, MIA, missing personal reports, hospitals, car accidents. Yes. No, no. I, I grew up with someone in my father's workplace who was just like that. He was a doctor who would disappear for, for day. He'd come in looking dressed and fine, a real doctor in a real hospital. And then sometimes he'd come into the store completely disheveled. He had soiled himself and his suit was ripped and we were never allowed to look uh, laugh at him my father would say shh don't say anything about dr m i said what happened he said he's an alcoholic that's what happens to him every once in a while i grew up understanding it thank you for calling i'll be right back it's the savage nation join the savage nation call now 855-400-SAVAGE 855-400-7282 savage my savage nation is sponsored by swissamerica.com the only company i trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver call 800 b u y c o i n so you have to ask yourself what's god's plan for the western world for 40 years, the radical feminists and the communists have screamed, hey, hey, ho, ho, Western civilization has got to go. And now their friends, their cousins, their brothers, the murderous Islamists are blowing up thousand-year-old churches, blowing up thousand-year-old monuments, and threatening to swamp the entire European Union and the United States of America. The Pope, of course, wants this to happen because it's good for business. The U EU wants it to happen, despite what the Moroccan Muslim did on the train. They're not going to eliminate the necessity to have a passport. They want free and open travel between all nations in Europe to permit Africans, for example, and Middle Easterners to overrun every country in Europe and turn Europe into something it could never survive as. You know, I went to the museum last week in New York City. As I'm walking around the Metropolitan Museum, there are whole wings devoted to the great church art of the 1500s, astounding to look at. And then you see the great art of the 1600s, the 1700s, and I see women, Muslims, with the burqas in there. And I asked someone I was with, why are they in this museum? They're walking around in a costume that says, I hate Western civilization. I want Western civilization to go. What are they marching around in the museum for, looking at Western civilization at its highest? I ask myself, what sane nation on earth floods a, a itself 
with people who wanted to die. Tell me what nation does that. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. It is, it is, it is, it is a Black Monday for investors. Uh, the big money went in and sold off, down almost 600 points at the end of the day. It was down as far as 1,000. I'm no financial expert, but we're all invested in this one way or the other. Many of you say, look, I'm just a little guy. I have no money in the market. What do I care if the big guys get hurt? Don't have that attitude because if the stock market continues to plummet, it will affect your lifestyle as sure as I'm sitting here. And at the bottom of the hour, at 30 minutes after the hour, I'm going to have an expert on gold here. Craig Smith, he's backed my show for years. And admittedly, gold is down as well. I want to hear what he has to say about his long-term prognostications for what the heck is going on. We know why this is happening. We know that China was uh, inflating its currency. We know that China was playing with its currency. We also know that China's run out of steam. There's only so much material that they can produce for the world. And there's only so much that the Chinese people themselves can consume. So it's that simple. In other words, everything has a limit. And whatever goes up must come down. Well, now it's on the way down. Anyway, here we are, but we're not talking about that on the Savage Nation. We got into the show, Ray Donovan, which I watched last night, and it was a fascinating, I think, the best of the series. And you don't have to get HBO for me to summarize it. It's an Irish family. They're all grown up, four brothers. They're living in L.A. One owns a gym, and the other one is kind of a screwed-up guy, like a, a mental case, even though he's a big guy, he's a weakling. And the third brother is Ray Donovan. He's the tough guy, never smiles, grim, very tough, very mean. He does all the dirty work for Hollywood, some of the Hollywood elite. And as it turns out, they were all molested by the same priest as a child. That's the, the storyline. So I asked myself, since there's a storyline in a popular drama like this, I think I'm going to ask the audience, were you molested as a child, whether it be by a priest or by another authority figure like a doctor even a parent. And then I wanted to know, not just were you molested, because that, okay, who wants to hear it? How does it affect you to this day? What did it make you into? What did you become as a result of the shame that was put upon you by this evil adult? Remember that, that's the effect it has on a child. It makes them, it makes them shame. They think that they're dirty. They think that they're evil. They think that they, that they encouraged it. It's perhaps the worst thing that you can do to a child it's the equivalent of stealing their life from them. You want to kill a child, molest the child. Because even when the child comes through therapy, he's still forever going to have that scar. And that's why it's a crime that has not yet met its punishment. 855 Of course, if you want to talk about the Hillary email scandal, I'm open for business. If you want to talk about Trump's rise, what can you say? He's clearly the front runner in both parties. Hillary's finished. She's toast. She has about as much chance to win right now as she does, does to run a 300-yard race and jump hurdles. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think she could get over the first hurdle, let alone the 300-yard uh, of hurdles that are ahead of her. It's drip, drip, drip. More is coming out every day. It's so bad for the demon cat, demon cat socialist Islamist bloc that they're, they're trying to recycle the, the, the complete unwinner. The man can't win anything. Joe Biden, he ran before and got nowhere. The man has no, nothing. What has he got to offer America? Stumbling and mumbling? What is he going to offer us that we haven't already seen from Obama? Nothing. And by the way, you know, this is a side note. The, the collapse of the stock market, and let's hope it doesn't keep going down, is good for Donald Trump because he's the only one who has any business sense. 
The others are professional politicians. They know from nothing. Joe Biden's never run a luggage store. Joe Biden couldn't sell luggage in a luggage store. Who would, who would think this man could save the economy? So that's that. You know, I was in, in New York last week, so I went to Central Park near Columbus Circle. There was a black guy playing the bongo drums in the park, you know, with a hat out and all of that. And he was a strong-looking guy, and uh, he had two paintings behind him. It's on my website, by the way. I think you can still see it. And on one side of him is a portrait that he painted of President Obama, Michelle Obama, and the two girls. And a reasonable rendition. And on the other side is a gigantic portrait of Donald Trump next to him, which he painted. So I, being who I am, I talk to him. As I, in New York, I can talk to anybody. In San Francisco, I can't talk to anybody. It's a city of numb, a numb city. If you ask someone a, a stranger a question, they call the police. They think that there's something wrong with you, if you're even having talked to them. Here, bottom of michaelsavage.com. There's the bongo player right at Columbus Circle, the portrait of the president's, president's family and, and Donald Trump. So I said to the, the, the drummer, I said, you like Donald Trump? She so looked at me and said, I like Donald Trump's money. Now, that said everything to me. Listen to what I just said to you. Here's a black guy, itinerant beggar in the park, playing a drum, an artist. Not bad. I can't do as good as he did. Big picture of Donald Trump, small, a smaller picture of the first family. And I said, you like Donald Trump? He said, I like his money. And I said, that's the election right there. End of story. Why? I told you this two weeks ago. I said even the poor will vote for Donald Trump because the poor would rather have a rich man for president than a schmuck like Bernie Sanders or a, a stumble bum like, uh, like the others they want to run. What do they want a communist to be president for? What the heck does Bernie Sanders know about an economy? Nothing other than how to rape it and sack it as a professor. Nothing, zero. The poor are not stupid. They're just poor. And don't confuse yourself if you have money that you're smart. And if they have no money, they're stupid. It doesn't work that way. Not everyone with money is smart, and not, not everyone without money is stupid. Doesn't work that way, way either. So in commonsensical terms, he said, I like Trump's money. That's it. That's the election right there. And I'm not Jimmy the Greek. I'm Michael Savage. The f phone number here is 855-407-282. We're talking about all these topics right now. And I know the one that you all want to talk about is the molestation. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I would like to have some of these calls. Because I think that this is as interesting as it gets in talk radio. We're living in interesting times where each man literally has to save himself. We have no authority figures to believe in. We have no government to believe in. That's why I wrote Government Zero, and it's not an infomercial. Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. I'm not ready to talk about it at length. I will be in September. The book is on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. And I made a commitment, which I should repeat right now. All of the royalties that I make on that book, and I'll repeat it again, write it down. Any and all royalties I make on that book will be given to my Savage Scholarship Fund for deserving college students going forward. That will be one of the things I leave as my legacy after my radio career. So it's going for a good cause. I'm not looking to buy a Rolls Royce if the book sells. I'm not building a beach house in, uh, in Neumann, North Carolina. I don't need any of those things. I don't live for the beach house and I don't live for the Rolls Royce. If you have it, God bless you. But that's not what, what's that important to me. What's important to me is my mental health and my physical health and the health of my family and the health of the nation in that order. If I am not for myself, who am I? If I'm only for myself, I mean, if I'm not for myself, who will be? If I'm only for myself, uh, who am I? Okay, that's a great statement that says it all. First, you put yourself first. That's number one. Make no, no mistake about it. Nobody lives for the others solely. Because if you don't take care of yourself, you'll fall apart. Then you can't help anybody else. So that means brush your teeth, get eight hours of sleep, and, and drink four glasses of water a day, okay? And stay off the cigarettes and the dope and the, the alcohol. And don't eat fatty foods. That's all. And knock off the candies. So here we are, another day, another day, another talk show. GOP consultant Alex Castellanos lays out a new plan to take down Donald Trump on Bloomberg. He says, well, you can't believe this. This is the Republican establishment through this silk smooth moron. In clip one, you gotta hear this, fire it. The best thing to do is the way Brutus killed Caesar. Get real close, snuggle up, and shiv him in the ribs. Right. In other words, hug <laughs> the message, but not the messenger. We right. understand yeah, right. the, 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 the Republican establishment, shiv Donald Trump in the ribs. 
Donald Trump has more to fear from the Republican establishment and the Better Business Bureau than he does from ISIS. Donald Trump has more to fear from the Republican Party itself than he does from the Mexican drug cartel leader on the run. Donald Trump has more to fear from the Republican establishment than he does from anyone on the planet. Beware, Donald Trump, because they want to shiv you in the ribs, in their own words. Thought I'd play it. Let's go to the callers. W G O W Tennessee Jonathan, you're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. My father, he was uh, molested in the time he was 12 to 14 by his uncle. And um, over the years growing up, I understand why he did the things that he did. He kept my mother and I in isolation. Um, very rarely do we go to family get togethers. He could barely hold a job. Um, I learned not to trust hardly anybody, and it affected me growing up as a kid. Wait, wait, I, I'm not, you're saying your father was abused by an uncle, and then he abused you and your mother? No, no, sir, he didn't abuse us. Uh, I was, I was, the point I was trying to make is how the effect that someone abuses someone else, the family of that individual, how it affects them. Oh, because your father was so hurt by the abuse that he was unable to perform adequately in life as a father. Yes, sir. Yeah, and I felt like that, uh, you know, I did not know why this was happening until I was around 16, and I found out uh, what had happened. And um, his family would cover it up. They uh, were, uh, you know, basically uh, it's religious people. They didn't want uh, the neighbors and me. Well, who, who did this to your father? You said an uncle did it to him? No, my, uh, my dad's uncle, because my dad's dad died when he was eight years old and so then around 12 years old is when my daddy's uncle started molesting him and he did that for up to two years uh, from 12 to the age about 14. Is that uncle still alive? No, he is not, thank God. Uh, he, he passed away um, about two years, I guess, before I really figured out what was going on. About time All I was right, so how does this affect you in a nutshell? Have you overcome it in any way or not? Well, it's taken years to do it, honestly, and um, I've had a lot of anger, distrust people. Um, you see, this is the raw nerve. This is the raw nerve of humanity right here. In other words, if you were to w be walking in the street, someone would look at you and not know any of this is going on inside you, correct? That's correct. You look like a normal guy. I'm sure that you're a reasonably well-dressed man. You, you don't walk around uh, you know, looking disheveled. You look like an average guy, right? That's correct. I'm, I'm, I'm a nurse, actually. A registered nurse. All right, but nobody knows what's going on inside you, the seething rage that you have to control every day, right? That's correct. Yeah. All right. Well, this, this is a lesson for all of us in many ways, and I've tried to teach it to friends and family because I learned it very many years ago. Highways, road rage, guy cuts you off and gives you the finger. Now, you don't know... You don't know. You you cut a guy off and give him the finger. He cuts you off and you give him the finger. You don't know what a sleeping time bomb is in that car, do you? That's right. Yep. That's you don't it. know if the guy. You don't know if the guy is a, a firework display about to go off at you. You don't know if he's going to trail you home. You don't know if he's going to shoot you. The best thing you could do is what a friend's lawyer father told me. One of the biggest lawyers in San Francisco before he passed away. He taught his sons. If you get into an altercation on the road by accident, a cutoff or this and that, never, ever engage with the other driver. Give a kind of a shrug like I'm sorry to the other guy and defuse it immediately. And this guy was one of the smartest, toughest lawyers I ever met. But he knew not to waste your time or risk your life in some idiotic contest on the highway with a stranger because people have, you don't know, but a guy could have lost his wife 10 minutes before on the phone. Something could have happened. He could have just heard that he lost all of his money in the stock market and he could go off and kill you for no reason. In New York just last week, I couldn't believe the front page of the Daily News. Two women, Estevez and Hernandez, fought over an umbrella in a McDonald's. Over an umbrella. Now, one of them, a boyfriend comes out with a knife and stabbed the other woman to death. Then her boyfriend comes out, he stabs him to death over an umbrella. The rage that exists just under the surface in this nation, maybe all nations, is hard to believe. Now, is it all related to molestation? Of course not. What I'm trying to tell you is that people carry around the seeds of hatred within them, and you must not cultivate those seeds. You've got to learn to avoid them. Okay, I'm trying to be a little preachy here for a reason. 
because I am not going to spend the rest of the years that I have on this planet talking about Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. You are back on the Savage Nation. The Dow Jones is down nearly 600 points on the fear of what's going on in China. Should you panic over it? Well, I don't know. What do I know what's coming tomorrow? Will the big boys move in and gobble up the stocks at the lowest point? Who knows what they're going to do? I mean, will there be uh, you know machine trading, so to speak? We have an expert on right after the break, Craig Smith, who's been sponsoring the show with Swiss America and his gold company for well over 10 years. I want to hear what he has to say because gold is also down. I don't know what he's going to say. I didn't rehearse it. We didn't talk about it. And I suspect he knows more about it than anyone I know because I trust him and I know you trust him. So I, I can't wait for that interview. But until then, we're talking about a very human thing, which is this molestation. So, John, could you make it in 30 seconds or less? You're calling from ABC. Tell us your story as quickly as you can. Yes, uh, when I was in elementary school, both of my parents molested me repeatedly, um, and then uh, blanked it out, and when they both molested both of my children from diapers up to about 10 years old. Oh, oh, oh. your parents molested you and then your children? Yeah, both of them together. Gra wait, you're saying you, they were grandparents who molested infants? Yeah, my two children. How do you know that for a fact? <laughs> They've admitted it. They're both dead. And where are, you, where are these sick people today? Well, they're both dead. My mother committed So there's, suicide there's, no, way to conf there's no way to, to, to corroborate this. You, your family must be very, very, you know, in, in great agony over this. Yeah, that's really bad. All right. Well, I don't know what to make of it. KSFO Radio, we want to talk about, well, I have a caller here that I can't get to. I will after Craig if he wants to hang on. If you care to join the conversation, the phone number is 855-407-282. France honors the three Americans who took down the Moroccan Muslim who would have blown up everyone on the train, machine gun them. Yeah, what heroes they are. And Obama had nothing to say about it. Even the socialist president of France gave them the Legion of Honor. And our great leader came back and mumbled nothing. Nothing! The man who hates America, hates the military, hates the police, and hates the church, and hates family. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. All right, we now go to the molestation of the American economy from the molestation of the individual. This economy has been molested ever since Obama took power molested by the greedy traders on Wall Street, especially the hedge fund operators. I agree with Trump a thousand percent on that. They need to be constrained. I wrote about it in Trickle Down Poverty. I talked about the Glass-Steagall Act. Believe me, I'm not, you know, a complete novice when it comes to these issues. So the market now goes down almost 600 points because of China, so they say. But there's a lot more involved. There's Janet Yellen of the Fed. What is she secretly doing? What's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know. Craig Smith who has sponsored this great show for all these years. Uh, he owns Swiss America, and he's with us right now on the Savage Nation. Craig, welcome to the program. First, Craig, thank you for being with us today. Oh, thank you, Michael. And, hey, we're getting ready to celebrate our 15th anniversary real soon. So I know. And I say 10, and it's that much longer. You've actually supported the show from the beginning. Craig, let's face it, the market is down do you think it's going to stay down or is someone going to the big money going to move in and, and, and buy up all the stocks at a low rate well you know we saw the big money move in right after the open this morning michael and we saw an 1100 point drop the market was down some 5.6 percent they came in and bought it back i think the biggest thing that's hurt this market is this high frequency trading it's been with us it's hurting these markets and i think it should be stopped but that being set aside, to answer your question, I think we're going to see some uh, recovery today. However, I don't like the way it's looking going into the close down another 588 points. We rallied back quite a bit, and now it looks like we may be heading back towards the lows of the day. So I don't think the worst is over yet. I think we'll see the worst 
sometime in, in late October. That's when it'll all be over. But I expect a relief rally somewhere out of here. And I don't know how many. Okay, wh- why, in your opinion, Craig, is this happening? What triggered this? Well, I think it started years ago, Michael. I wrote about it in the book, Don't Bank on It. You know, when, when Ben Bernanke came out, came out and made that statement that said he needed to support the equities market so people would have confidence to continue to believe in America and, and spend money and this and that, he, put, he did quantitative easing, printing money, in essence, to make, keep everything simple. The market was at 13000 He drove it to 17000 And then, of course, we continued to see China grow and everything. Well, well let's fine. slow down so people follow you, Craig. He drove the stock market up by pumping printed money into the economy. Isn't that what you're saying? That's absolutely correct, Michael. And nobody can, nobody can, can disagree with that because the evidence is there to prove it. And okay, so so in other words, they pump money in. It, it's an artificial stimulus. It worked, though. It kept the economy going. Everyone felt good about the economy. But most of us who were far-seeing said this can't go on forever. There has to be a correction, right? That's exactly correct, Michael. You can, it's, it's like a drug addict. You know, you can keep feeding him more drugs and he'll feel okay, but sooner or later he's got to kick the habit, and that's when the problems start to happen. And All right, so you, you, you own Swiss America, Premier Gold Company, the only one I actually support. I trust you. I've bought gold from you. I still will. Gold is also down. Why is gold a good investment right now, if it is? Well, because it's going to be a safe haven, Michael, and a lot of people are moving to cash or cash equivalents. Cash equivalents would be land, would be gold, would be things that are, have a real tangible value to them. And, and right now, Michael, I don't... You know, think- well, let me just interject. People may say, well, he's an advertiser, so he's on the show, and they're just pumping it. I got to say this, Craig, when you said that to me, there's a news story out yesterday in Greece where the uh, economy has crumbled. They've reduced to a barter system over there. They're actually bartering in, in Greece, and I'm sure they're bartering with gold coins. Well, in some cases they are, and that, that happened in the Russian crisis at the end of the 90s, where the Russian ruble collapsed. You, they have what was called the little Russian chevronettes. It was a 20-ruble coin, and that actually traded for the equivalent in American money that would have given you the same buying power in rubles than before it collapsed. However, I don't think we'll end up in a barter system, Michael. I don't think we'll have Krugerrands and Maple Leafs trading at the, at the grocery stores. A currency of acceptability will emerge out of this, and that's why I'm very concerned on the offhanded comments that Kerry made about the Iran deal, that we could lose our reserve currency status. Well, you don't say things like that as a Secretary of State. That's a Secretary of Treasury's uh, position, and I think he let the cat out of the bag. The, the IMF is meeting October 20th to talk about a SDR, a special drawing right, and I fully believe, Michael, just like the French lost it, just like the British lost it, the U.S. is going to lose its reserve currency status, and that's when gold is going to play an integral part. But I, Saying all that, you know me, Michael. I tell people a small portion of your money belongs in gold. Five, ten percent. If you're real aggressive, fifteen percent. You need to be well diversified. And right now, I'm like you, Michael. I'm primarily in gold, cash, and land. Mm-hmm. And it does. Well, I, I haven't. I haven't sold my gold. I mean, I always felt that, God forbid, things fall apart. There's a reality in gold that is a reality that is indisputable. Here's the, here's the question. We have an international currency war that's going on. That's indisputable. Check with Jim Rickards or anybody. It's, we have a currency war that's going on. The ultimate currency in the world is gold. Whether you take a gold coin to the, to the offices of Wall Street or you take it to the deepest parts of the Amazonian jungle, people know what gold is. If you take a bond to a guy in the middle of the Amazon jungle, he doesn't know what the heck it is for Pete's sakes. And this is what's important to be understanding on days like today. Gold's going to fluctuate. It's going to go up and down. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And you know what's funny today, Michael? It was up to 1170 today, and then the margin calls all went out on the stock positions, and they started liquidating gold. And look at HSBC, Michael. They bought 9.2 tons of gold 
over the last year, and once the Volcker rule is fully in place, it's going to make it's going to allow them to be able to hold as much as they'd like, and banks will be able to fund and and do things with that. Wait, wait, wait. When should, what, once the Volcker rule is what? What is the Volcker rule? The, the Volcker rule has many facets to it, but one of them is. It, it prohibits banks from engaging in prioritary trading in physical gold and silver. And ah. now it's allowing them to, but soon they're going to also, when, when the banks funded and controlled hedge funds and private equity funds are finally subject to the Volcker Rule, it should, in a significant way, put upward pressure on the price of the metals held by the banks. And I always ask people one simple question. I know we're short of time. If gold is such a bad thing, why is every central bank in the world, including ours in some cases, buying gold? Why are the Russians buying gold? Why are the Chinese buying gold? Why is HSBC and Goldman Sachs buying gold, Michael? You and make a good point, and I think it's not fallen on deaf ears on the Savage Nation, Craig. Craig owns Swiss America, SwissAmerica.com. If this sounded like an infomercial, it wasn't. It was a straight-out informational interview with my number one sponsor for going on 15 years. You know, Craig and I rarely, if ever, do this. But on a day like today, when the market goes down so many points, I had only one expert I would turn to, and that is Craig Smith of SwissAmerica.com. Craig, thank you very much for a succinct explanation of your opinion of what's going on and what's going to happen in the future. Thank you, Craig. Thanks. I appreciate your sponsorship and your being with us on the Savage Nation. Now let's go back with all the other news stories of the day other than the financial. And many people are continuing to talk about the one thing only that triggered this today, and that's not Donald Trump. That is the effects of molestation on them when they were young and what it's doing to them today. Michelle, WABC, tell us your topic, please. What's on your mind? I was molested from 3 to 11 years old by my stepfather after being abandoned by my birth father. That stays with you for the rest of your life. Through therapy, I have very strong faith. If it wasn't for God, I would be a statistic. And without getting specific and without getting vulgar, when you say molested, get as close as you can to telling us what he did to you. All fondling, but it was all manipulation. I mean, looking back on it as an adult, and I didn't have a. Wait, wait, wait. I didn't. Did you say it was not fondling, but manipulation? What was it? Fondling, but incessantly. I mean, I'm not hearing her. I don't understand what's wrong with the engineering today. I can't hear a word you're saying. Please say it again. What did he do to you? Fondling. There was no penetration. It was only fondling. But In other words, touch. He was touching you, touching you, touching you. Okay, so that affected you deeply. And what did it do to you psychologically uh, and emotionally? You can't sleep at night. You don't know when that's going to happen. So your trust, because your trust is being formed at around eight, nine years old. And so that shatters you forever. And no matter, I'm very successful, professional. I have a very strong faith. If it were not for the faith, I do believe... I would have gone by the wayside for any number of reasons um, years ago. M Michelle, do you ever have a desire to get even with him? He is deceased. No. We found our peace. I actually cared for him when he was dying because no one else did. <laughs> so. Wow. So even though he abused you when you were so young, you were able to take care of him when he was so weak? Yes. Forgiveness is the ornament of the brave. I tried to look at it like that. And it is actually healing because he came clean with what happened. So unlike some of your callers, that was a gift for me because we were able to talk about it. And of course, being sick, he had emphysema, which is a very slow, cruel death. Um, wait, 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 wait. Did he, did, he, did he cry and say he was sorry? Uh, yes. But it wasn't over one day. It was, you know, they, he tried to show me in many, many ways. So I was lucky to somehow get some healing. But, again, the trust, I don't trust the people that work for me. I don't trust the, I don't trust, Ed. it's so hard. I always see well, I don't think you. I don't think you have to be a survivor of molestation not to trust the people who work for you. I think that's that's a healthy attribute, even for people who are psychologically and emotionally quite healthy. I think it's just wisdom. Yeah. 
So it really does. And um, I had a beautiful, beautiful mother, God rest her soul. And uh, if it were not for her, she shielded me because her love was so big and so present that it kind of... It All right, so Michelle, I've covered this topic of molestation and its effects on adults for an hour and 45 minutes now. Are you you're, you're a regular listener to the show, I assume, right? Absolutely. I have all your books. I adore you. I know you don't like to oh. it, but I'm going to say it. No, no, wait a minute. So when I shift to something like this, the molestation, do you find it off topic, on topic? Do you want me to do more lifestyle, less? What would you want? I, I, I'm not... I grabbed the phone right away and I dialed until I got through. Um, it, the fact that you brought it, someone like you was, spoke of it, it, it compelled me to pick up the phone. So if you did more of it, more lifestyle, fine. But you somehow find a way to, to intertwine it with everything else because we are the sum of our parts. So Yes, exactly right. We're not simply two robots with the Democrat-Republican nonsense. But that's, again, the whole other... Shows. All right. All right. Thank you for that call. Let me just read some of the headlines I pulled today and yesterday. These are my headlines. Islamic Islamist killer's lawyer in France said he found the AK-47 in the park and he was not a terrorist. He was only going to rob the train passengers, that he's not a Muslim terrorist at all. That's a lawyer. I swear to God. His attorney is Sophie David, and she told that to French broadcaster BFM TV. As far as the AK-47 that the Muslim gunman used in the attack on the train, the attorney, Sophie David, said he found that in the park. And that's lawyers for you. I was going to cover that. Hillary's email defense is total BS, says a former State Department official. No kidding. Well, now they figured that out. How Al Sharpton could benefit from backing an Iran nuclear deal. New York Post. Really? Al Sharpton cashing in on politics? I find it hard to believe. After all, isn't he a reverend? Army kicking out Green Beret, who stood up for Afghan rape victim. This story is enough to make you crazy. But then again, under Barack Obama, all the heroes are being kicked out and all the others are being welcomed in to the U.S. military. Here's another one for you that you may have missed from the American Mirror. Illegal lecturing America about immigration and white privilege was hit with a $41,000 tax lien. You may have heard of Jose Antonio Vargas. He likes to lecture real Americans about immigration and the evils of white privilege. But now it's been revealed that Jose Antonio Vargas has been living off the American system and not contributing much to it. Red Alert Politics obtained a copy of a lien filed against Vargas by the IRS in February. The lien totaled $41,945. Apparently, he failed to pay federal taxes in 2010. The year, he says, before he came out is undocumented. Thank you, Mr. Anti-White Privilege. Welcome to the club. I'll be right back on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. You know, before this hour comes to an end, we're talking about abuse and whatnot. If you have seen the Planned Parenthood videos and what they do to fetuses, you have to say to yourself, are we, are we living through Nazi Germany or not? You look at these women, most of whom are radical feminists who run these abortion mills. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Can't help but noticing reality. They're slurping their wine, stuffing their fat faces with cheesecake, and selling whole babies for research purposes so they can make a buck off it. Do you know even the Third Reich did not sell aborted body parts? This is something beyond Hitler. And so what does the state attorney general do in California, a protege of Willie Brown? What does Kamala Harris do? Does she say, I'm outraged, we're going to make sure, uh, we're going to get to the bottom of these na these Nazis in the Planned Parenthood business and, 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 and punish them to the full extent of the law? She says, I'm going to punish those who took the video. That's the new, the new party line of the Democrat, Socialist, Islamist, baby-killing party called the Democrat machine. The most evil machine the world has ever seen is now going to punish those whistleblowers who uncovered these fascists trading in baby body parts. 
So don't think that this abuse business starts when you're born. The abuse starts in the womb, and you don't have to look any further than the radical monsters who run Planned Parenthood. That's one man's opinion. If you don't like it, it's too damn bad, because that's the way it is. That's the world we live in. Everything is upside down, and the twisted sisters in the Democrat machine are protecting the Nazis. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, how I hit Blue Monday. Got to work, like a sleeve all deep. Here come Tuesday. Come Tuesday, it's the Savage Nation. I don't want to deal with the abuse anymore. We did it for two hours where you molested as a child. How did it affect you? How does it affect you now? But people are still calling on it because there's a lot of injured people out there. And we talked about Hillary covering up with the email scandal and the GOP consultant saying that the only way to take down Trump is how Brutus killed Caesar, get close, then shiver him in the ribs. I swear to God, I'm not making this up. But there are many other stories. I got another one at the end of the hour I haven't read yet. The ACLU is suing the federal government because the Catholic groups that are sheltering the immigrants from, South Amer from Central America are not aborting enough immigrant babies. Planned Parenthood and the ACLU are suing Catholic charities to turn over more of the young girls for abortions. I'm not making this up. This is how ugly it is. This is how sick it is. This is how demented they are. It's everything you feared about the ACLU and the Planned Parenthood monsters, but more. But it gets worse. And I don't want to give you any more bad news. The phone number is 855-407-282. Any of the topics I touched on is fair game, except, I don't know, I'm not going to do Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump right now. When I read that Howard Stern is now being asked what he thinks about uh, the election, I know it's over for me. I don't even want to talk about it. If they're going to the, the wig balloon man for an opinion on Donald Trump, I think I'm kind of out of the race right now until, let's say, a year from now. Get back to me a year from now on 2016. I'm going to have something to say about it. Do you think I'm going to sit here and talk about the 2016 presidential race for well over a year? You are wrong if you think so. I would rather talk about two people stabbing each other over an umbrella in the Bronx than talk about the presidential race every day of my life. That's not what God put me on the earth. You know, one of the shows I like to watch at night when I relax, late at night when it turns dark, thank God. It's always a long day's journey into night for me. I always wait for darkness. I feel relaxed when the sun falls. Okay, so it's weird. What can I do? Anyway, the sun falls. I sit and stare at the bay. I watch the last few lone birds looking for a meal. Uh, you see, there's no welfare in the animal kingdom. If they don't hunt, they don't eat. And then I click on the TV, and while I'm waiting for a show that I might watch, one of the shows I watch are car shows. I'm interested in cars. I'm in a, I've been a car nut since I'm a kid, I realized. I only went through a few years when I was a hippie and thought that it was kind of gauche to care about cars. I was like, oh, what do I need a car for? I mean, I'm, I'm Mr. Natural. We don't need cars, you know. Well, uh, guess what? Even the hippies needed cars, as you well imagine, and most of them have grown up now and they have airplanes while telling you not to even have a, a, a goat cart. So one of the things I do is I, I've always liked old Jaguars because they're trouble. They're beautiful, they're good looking, they look great, but they're trouble. And I thought that I needed more trouble after I bought the 1970 XKE a year ago. Since I had it fixed up, it doesn't cause me any trouble. It hardly leaks anymore. So about a month or two ago, I bought another one, an XKE, a 150, a 1960, gorgeous, stunning, uh, unfortunately, it had some problems with it. So I turned it over to a local garage, and I just got the bill a minute ago. They're very honest people. You can imagine what this would have cost me if I turned it over to the Jaguar people themselves. I could have built a house for what it would cost me. 
It's not a lot of money. I mean, you think about it. Look what they found with it. Inspect stiff, non-working window. Uh, okay, we'll let that go. $420. Uh, crank. Lubricate wing window. Uh, clock assembly is bad. I, I know the clock assembly is bad. I said, buy me a new. Remove oil pan. Clean pan. Replace new pan gasket. Fit rear engine oil pan sump gasket. Replace oil. $360. Remove all cooling system hoses to replace $240. Remove and replace inner tie rods, $420. Uh, remove and replace front brake rotors, $300. The rotors, can you imagine the guy sold me a car with rotors that had, they had reground, but they only cost $49 a piece? Can you imagine that? What these dealers do to you? They would have cost them nothing to replace them. Remove, repack, reinstall front wheel bearings. Remove and replace fuel tank, $120. Sending, uh, the sending unit was leaking on the, it was a small problem. It was a small problem. The fuel tank sending unit was leaking live gasoline onto a hot, hot exhaust pipe. It could have turned me into a torch. So that cost $120, well spent. Uh, remove and reinstall door panel, $240. Test drive car. And have alignment done. It's not that bad. You add it all up, though, you could faint. The odometer says 47,000 miles. Yeah, right. Okay, 47,000 miles, right. That's like Hillary Clinton saying she has that kind of mileage on. All right, the bill isn't so bad. Still needs a few things. Wheel bearing, clamp, clamp, knockoff, $65, window regulator. It's not that bad. It's a hobby. And the whole object. By the way, classic cars are going to drop like a rock. after With the Cuba and the junk coming in and... With the economy the way it is, I didn't buy it for an investment. I bought it to look at and not drive. It's like the Italians. They buy Ferraris, I understand, in Italy, and they don't drive them. They put them in their big bonds, and they sit and smoke cigars, and they drink uh, wine at night looking at the cars. Not a bad way to own a Ferrari. What's the point of driving it? All you're going to do is diminish its value. Welcome to the Savage Nation. I thought I'd entertain you for a few minutes before we get into the news that's boring. I love Fox News. They have Geraldo Rivera talking about a stock market meltdown. It doesn't get any better than that one. An expert, Geraldo Rivera. Unbelievable to me. And she's coming back tonight, Martha Washington, after hiding for 10 days, after exposing herself for being a Democrat plant. Nice way to go, Rupert. You did a great job, Roger. She's been hiding for 10 days, and Martha comes back tonight. Well, guess what? Trump's stock soared while her stock bombed. Whatever her name is. I keep forgetting her name. What's her real name? Megan Kelly. Old Megan Kelly had to go into hiding for 10 days after being exposed for what she was. And now she's coming back. And Trump, who she tried to destroy, rose, rose, rose while she fell, fell, fell. But I'm sure they'll kiss and make up because it's good for ratings for both of them. That opens up our number three on the Savage Nation. 855-400-7282. WMAL Michael, what's your topic? Go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Yes, I have a theory about uh, this uh, Hillary Clinton uh, server thing uh, I don't think anybody has touched on. Uh, I used to work for the State Department Communications uh, Center as a telecommunications support officer years ago. So the technology has changed a lot, but I've kept up to the technology, and I've sold computers and, and communications gear to the intelligence community. And I believe that... Uh, What's actually happening, as we know, <clears throat> Cheryl Miles and uh, Huma uh, Abedin have had positions in the Clinton Foundation, as has Sidney Blumenthal. Uh, and we know that there's a lot of Sidney Blumenthal information that was passing to Hillary that he was theorizing what was going on in Lebanon. If that information had been uh, actual... Wait, wait, you, wait, hold it. You mean Blumenthal was theorizing what was going on in Li Libya, correct? Libya, Libya, yes, I'm sorry, yes, Libya. See, I actually listened to my callers. I heard that. Go on, continue, please. Okay, so uh, basically, in the State Department, there are two networks. There's an open network, which ties to the Internet, and then there's a closed one called uh, Classnet, mm -hmm. which is uh, only used uh, for passing sensitive and classified information. Mm -hmm. uh, Hillary would uh, not have needed a personal email to receive classified information. The classified information would have gone directly to the title. So being the Secretary of State, the email would go to her. It would be the same email or same routing address as John Kerry would have. So information most likely would be passed to her in hard form. So they'd print out a document, and based on its uh, urgency, mm -hmm. they would pass it to her. 
I don't mm-hmm. think that she uh, used this to, uh, for convenience to gain access to classified information. You mentioned, uh, or some people mentioned the SCIF. They can put SCIFs in people's homes, and they can use classified uh, devices to, uh, to receive classified information. Let, let me see if I follow you. What you're saying is it's really as innocent as Hillary says. There's nothing really there. There's no espionage. There's no, no nothing on that level. I think it's more serious than anybody's ever guessed. I think wait, wait, you, what wait you have me confused. I think what you're saying is one thing, and I'm receiving it another way. Your bottom line is that what she did was even worse than we think? Yes. I believe that what she did is she is that she set up a server that had a link to the class net so that she could exchange private information between her aides using commercial devices. My theory is is that in order for her to communicate to Huma Abedin, who had a position at the Clinton Foundation as well as the State Department, and and uh, Cheryl Miles, who also had that position, and Sidney Blumenthal, who was being paid only by the foundation that she could bypass the commercial internet not leaving any footprints about any evidence that she might have so you're 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 a guy who knows a lot more than i would ever hope to know about this email business because you were in the business and you designed uh, such things for the state department you say so what was she doing then what do you think she was actually doing hillary she wanted access to military grade uh encryption to not leave any traces of communications that might in- incriminate her and her aides about... But what would she need that information for? What was she after? Well, if, for example, Uma was negotiating speeches for Bill at the same time that uh, they were, uh, uh, you know, this quid pro quo type of thing that we believe went on, we have no evidence of that. And we have no evidence of that because uh, I believe is because... Oh, wait, wait, wait. What you're s- hold on. What you're saying is when Bill Clinton was giving speeches to foreign governments for astonishingly absurd, embarrassing pornographic uh, prices like 750000 Are you saying you suspect he was trading inside information uh, uh, on a military level that he got from the wife? No, I believe that what happened was that those negotiations were done in, between her aides in a way that would never uh, come out through the commercial internet. I, un- I, say, I understand that, but what you're saying is they were giving up classified military information in order to get these big dollar speech amounts for Bill? No, no. Uh, what I'm saying is, is let's uh, say again, no. the Russians. But I, I, we're not getting in here. So what is it that they were doing? I don't follow you. Well, let's say that uh, she sent information that, hey, you know, uh, about this uranium deal, it would help it a little bit if, uh, you know, you, uh, we got Bill to come over and discuss some of this with you, and he could give some speeches while he was there. If such an email went out through the commercial Internet, that would have gone through, you know, Yahoo servers, Google servers, and everything else. But on the other hand, if she could communicate freely with her aides in a way that uh, there's no footprints left. On- All right, so what you're saying is they were dealing with that kind of stuff, and so you're implying that she was giving up sensitive military-grade information for profit, isn't that what you're saying? No. What I'm again, saying no. Is, is that she was- I, you know, this is the fourth time I've asked you a leading question. You've said no. So let's turn it another way. What are you saying? What I'm saying is, is that she wanted to have her own private uh, internet. Yes, but for what reason, sir? Mm. What would she need that for? So that that information would never get out in the public. So it would- correct. But what information? Information about uh, money that's going to pass to the Clinton Foundation for... Correct, but what is the money for? The money is for information she was passing to Bill through AIDS is what you're implying. Isn't that what you're saying? The, the money would be for Bill giving speeches, donations... Yeah, I understand, but you're saying the reason he got such extraordinarily high rates is because he was actually passing classified information to these governments. Isn't that more or less what you're saying? No. What I'm saying... Okay, I'm finished. This guy must work for Howard Stern. The next thing I would hear is Baba Baba Do. I mean, I mean, what, is there any fifth, eighth time already said no? Just when I think I understand him, he says no again. I have no idea what he was talking about. Robert, do you know what he was talking about, Jim? Was he a crank caller or was this guy a legitimate caller? He was legitimate, but he was confused. I think what he was suggesting is, and let me summarize it, and how do I know if it's true? He thinks, as a guy who works in the field, that Hillary Clinton and the aides were passing classified information from the military 
to Bill Clinton, to other governments, to aides of other governments, in exchange for speaker fees. That is purely speculative. There is absolutely no way to verify that. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. The three American servicemen who stopped the Muslim, Moroccan terrorist on a train were given France's top honor by the socialist President Hollande, gave them the Legion of Honor. That's a huge, huge honor. And do you know what your president did for them? Nothing. The fraud in the White House gave a limp-wristed statement about, oh, it could have been a bigger tragedy had these men not intervened. That's what your president is. You know what a laughing stock he is? Your president. You know, I don't spend a lot of time on him because he embarrasses me to talk about him. He is extremely nauseating. When a socialist like Hollande gives the Legion of Honor to Alex Scarlatos, Anthony Sadler and Spencer Stone for taking down the Islamist with an AK-47 on a speeding passenger train, and your president says almost nothing, does that not confirm what I've been saying to you now for all these years about who he is? where his loyalties lie, what he wants to do to our military and is doing to our military, what he has done to the morale of the nation. Doesn't it confirm it completely and totally? What will it take for you to finally realize which side Obama is really on and who he's really working with and for? How else can I put it to you? Well, I wrote Stop the Coming Civil War. I was half right. Tell me what Ferguson and Baltimore were, if not little civil wars. And now I have a big book coming out in October entitled Government Zero, No Borders, No Language, No Culture. And tell me I'm wrong about that. And incidentally, while I'm mentioning it, somebody said to me, Dr. Savage, why don't you remind your audience that long before others were talking about immigration, in 1994, you were writing about immigration. You were talking about immigration. You were talking about what it would do to this country, this flood of illegal aliens, and they called you every name under the sun. You've paid every penalty known to radio for having pioneered the story of what open borders would do to America. And now that Donald Trump has finally made it a mainstream topic, you, Michael Savage, are seen for who you are. And thank you for writing Government Zero. Well, you'll hear much more about that book as the months go on. Now we go back to regular programming on the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. Queens, where we used to get five papers. They used to be the Journal American and one other paper, whichever, the, the Daily Mirror. And my father, who was not an educated man, was a well-read man and loved the news. And I'd say, Dad, why do you read five newspapers? He said, I want to get different opinions. Well, guess what? So do I. But I don't know anyone listening to this show who has an opinion that differs than mine. When you have ongoing rape of young girls who are screaming out and not one word comes out of the mouth of the ice cream licking president or so-called women's rights groups or any of the other people in the human rights business it's enough to make anyone crazy so I open the post and there's an opinion piece by Phyllis Chesler and it goes like this modern Schindler's quote I've been raped 30 times and it's not even lunchtime cried one young Yazidi woman in a dangerous and desperate call Chillingly, the young woman begged the man on the line, someone embedded with the Kurdish Peshmaga fighting ISIS. She said, quote, if you know where we are, please bomb us. There is no life after this. I'm going to kill myself anyway. That request was made a year ago. So far, not one whorehouse has been bombed. Not one slave auction has been interrupted by your great heroic leader of the Western world, Barack Hussein Obama. But there is one man who is doing everything he can to stop this. There is one man who is a modern day Jew during the Holocaust. He's a Canadian Jewish businessman, Stephen Maimon. And he's overseen the rescue of more than 120 kidnapped Christian and Yazidi girls in Iraq. I intend to send them a large donation and do everything I can to stop this. I've never seen anything like it. It makes me crazy. I got to tell you something. I'm on vacation with my family in New York. 
I was supposed to take this day off and do certain things. When I saw that story, I started to sweat, and I got angry again. I also got angry when I was watching the lipstick smears on Fox News yakking this morning and not saying took secretive in emails and now we're hearing that they're all personal emails very important story now i promised you another sound bite which i'm going to give you which i couldn't believe a moron in my opinion an absolute moron or shall i say an idiot a moron imbecile idiot i don't know which words are allowed anymore i would say this gop consultant alex castellanos goes on Bloomberg News and lays out a plan to take down Donald Trump's Donald Trump by saying you should do it how Brutus killed Caesar. Get close to Donald Trump, then shiver him in the ribs. This is the Republican establishment at work. This is the same establishment that shivved America in the ribs. This is the same establishment that gave us the drunk John Boehner, the chicken farmer uh, with a gullet. McConnell, who stabbed us in the back after we put him in power. Listen to this GOP consultant on how to take down Donald Trump in clip number one. The best thing to do is the way Brutus killed Caesar. Get real close, snuggle up, and shiv him in the ribs. Right. In other words, hug the message, but shiv not the messenger. The we understand your frustration, America. We know why you right. hate Washington. Michael Savage to Alex Castellanos drop dead. Alex Castellanos, thank God we know who you really are now. You are a GOP consultant. You exemplify everything wrong with the Republican Party. I would say you're ashamed to the Republican Party, but that would be a lie. You are the Republican Party. Well, I'm sorry to report that the president is back from vacation. Things were better before he came back. It's almost as though the stock market reacted to his arrival on the scene. I only wish that he bought a house in Martha's Vineyard and became the mayor of Martha's Vineyard and stayed there. But he's back. And the first act of the president is not to take on ISIS and to stop them from their rape and their enslavement and blowing up monuments and killing people. It's to fly to Las Vegas and give a speech on solar energy to pay back his investors. I mean, his sponsors or whatever they call them, donors. They're called investors. You call them uh, donors to a campaign. They're investing in him. He's got to pay him off now before they, he leaves office. He's got to take a job as the head of an, an energy company, maybe, after the, the eight years of wonderful work. But that's not what I want to talk about. We're talking about stuff. Hillary Clinton campaign scrambling to control damage from the ongoing email server investigations. I mean, they keep lying about it. Rocky press conference last week. She sounded like a fool. Frustrated Clinton allies are admitting that her campaign's earlier attempts to stonewall uh, and call it a partisan witch hunt didn't work. It just didn't work. In fact, it's so bad that they're bringing up a loser like Biden to enter the race. Now, you and I both know Biden is a complete and total loser. He cannot win. Impossible. I don't care how many illegals he floods in from Mexico or Somalia. He cannot be elected. The man is absolutely a doofus. He's not getting elected. If he runs against Trump, you know what, what the results are? 75-25. If the communist from the gutters of New York runs, Sanders, America doesn't like Bernie Sanders. Classical New York socialist. They hate him. Oh, he's drawing big crowds where? University towns. Big deal. In the big picture, Bernie Sanders against Trump, it's 95-5 or 90-10. I pray to God that they run Biden. That's all I can say to you. Then maybe you'll be safe again if we if we finally get rid of the, the Democrat socialist regime. I want to talk about prayer one more minute because I grew up in a family that was not particularly religious, but I know that they always knew God was in their life and over overlooking everything. And I remember overhearing from family members about what happened in World War II to two distant relatives. One was in a foxhole with two other men during a shelling in the Ardennes Forest, I believe. His name was Danny. And this story spread through the family after World War II. I was a little boy. And they said Danny was in a foxhole during a heavy shelling. And they were told not to get out of the foxhole. Danny heard his mother's voice saying, Danny, 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 get out of that foxhole. Get out, get out, get out. He got out. He ran somewhere and a shell hit the foxhole and killed his two friends. So I heard that one. That was one. As a little boy, remember, as a little kid. Here's another one. Absolutely what I heard. Another cousin, distant relative, was somewhere on the uh, Euro in the European campaign, World War II. His mother had given him a small Bible to carry. He carried it all through any battle he had been in. 
inside his chest pocket, left side. They swore to me that a bullet was fired, hit him in the Bible, didn't kill him. The Bible acted as a whatever, you know, a shield. I heard that story. Now you say, well, what about all the men that carried Bibles that were blown up and never seen? I don't know about them. You see, here is the problem with being overly rational. It's like the story of Eve. She ate of the uh, tree of knowledge and she lost faith in God. There's a point at which too much knowledge destroys man's spirit. Now, does that mean we should remain ignorant? I didn't say that. All I can say to you is that man sometimes is too smart for his own good. That's what I'm trying to say to you. There comes a point, in my, in, my, in my opinion, I know many bright people who don't believe in God, and they're my friends, but I'm not one of them. They ask me how I, as a rationalist, being as intelligent as I apparently am, how do you actually believe in God? I said, how do you not believe in God? Would you create yourself? They don't have an answer for that. And then there's the other line that I always use is, I love the atheists who say they don't believe in anything. I said, well, you believe in nothing, therefore you believe in something. So in other words, everybody believes in something. And I'm just gambling that there is a God who's going to judge me when I die. And that's it. That's the whole story. So there, I have this childish outlook on life and on God. And I believe that uh, there is a great creator. You know, I said this to another one of my relatives the other day. That is Einstein in his last years was asked, does God exist? And Albert Einstein said the more he studies the out limits of the universe, the more he realizes that it's, it couldn't have been created by chance. There has to have been a divine inspiration, a divine creator, rather. It could not have happened by chance. So you know what? I'll trust Einstein's view of the universe rather than yours. So on the way back from New York, smooth flight in a friend's plane, I'm relaxing, sleeping in a seat, and somewhere outside of Denver, the planes, after flying flat like a railroad car, plane starts to shimmy and shake, shimmy and shake. I jump up out of the seat, and I say, God, please, I meant it's only a blessing. Please, I meant it's a blessing. I meant it's a blessing. As, as God is my witness, the minute I finished that prayer, the plane stabilized. Well, all I'm saying is I made a little prayer, and the plane then stopped shaking, and I was sure God heard my prayer because I wanted to live. And I had, I swear as God is my witness, I truly believe that we have the power of life and death within ourselves that we can literally self-actuate. And I don't mean it'll happen that second, of course, unless you jump off a building. I'm not talking about that. I mean we have the seeds of our own destruction within us. We can, we can trigger that pathway or we can decide to live. And I say, therefore, choose life. Therefore, choose life. We have that power within us we can do the same for the nation as for ourselves we can make america live again if we'd all understand that we have the power to do so after all these years of this atheist cursing america and i'll say it again he hates america he has cursed america so you have to ask yourself what's god's plan for the western world for 40 years the radical feminists and the communists have screamed hey hey ho ho western civilization has got to go and now their friends, their cousins, their brothers, the murderous Islamists are blowing up thousand-year-old churches, blowing up thousand-year-old monuments, and threatening to swamp the entire European Union and the United States of America. The Pope, of course, wants this to happen because it's good for business. The U EU wants it to happen despite what the Moroccan Muslim did on the train. They're not going to eliminate the necessity to have a passport. They want free and open travel between all nations in Europe to permit Africans, for example, and Middle Easterners to overrun every country in Europe and turn Europe into something it could never survive as. You know, I went to the museum last week in New York City. As I'm walking around the Metropolitan Museum, there are whole wings devoted to the great church art of the 1500s, astounding to look at. And then you see the great art of the 1600s, the 1700s, and I see women, Muslims, with the burqas in there. And I ask someone I was with, why are they in this museum? They're walking around in a costume that says, I hate Western civilization. I want Western civilization to go. What are they marching around in the museum for, looking at Western civilization at its highest? I ask myself, what sane nation on earth floods a, a itself 
with people who wanted to die. Tell me what nation does that. This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800. Uh, the big money went in and sold off, down almost 600 points at the end of the day. It was down as far as 1,000. I'm no financial expert, but we're all invested in this one way or the other. Many of you say, look, I'm just a little guy. I have no money in the market. What do I care if the big guys get hurt? Don't have that attitude because if the stock market continues to plummet, it will affect your lifestyle as sure as I'm sitting here. We know why this is happening. We know that China was uh, inflating its currency. We know that China was playing with its currency. We also know that China's run out of steam. There's only so much material that they can produce for the world. And there's only so much that the Chinese people themselves can consume. So it's that simple. In other words, everything has a limit. And whatever goes up must come down. Well, now it's on the way down. Of course, if you want to talk about the Hillary email scandal, I'm open for business. If you want to talk about Trump's rise, what can you say? He's clearly the front runner in both parties. Hillary's finished. She's toast. She has about as much chance to win right now as she does, does to run a 300-yard race and jump hurdles. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think she could get over the first hurdle, let alone the 300-yard uh, of hurdles that are ahead of her. It's drip, drip, drip. More is coming out every day. It's so bad for the demon cat, demon cat socialist Islamist bloc that they're, they're trying to recycle the, the, the complete unwinner. The man can't win anything. Joe Biden, he ran before and got nowhere. The man has no nothing. What has he got to offer America? Stumbling and mumbling? What is he going to offer us that we haven't already seen from Obama? Nothing. And by the way, you know, this is a side note. The, the collapse of the stock market, and let's hope it doesn't keep going down, is good for Donald Trump because he's the only one who has any business sense. The others are professional politicians. They know from nothing. Joe Biden's never run a luggage store. Joe Biden couldn't sell luggage in a luggage store. Who would, who would think this man could save the economy? So that's that. You know, in New York last week, so I went to Central Park near Columbus Circle. There was a black guy playing the bongo drums in the park, you know, with a hat out and all of that. And he was a strong looking guy. And uh, he had two paintings behind him. It's on my website, by the way. I think you can still see it. And on one side of him is a portrait that he painted of President Obama, Michelle Obama, and the two girls. And a reasonable rendition. And on the other side is a gigantic portrait of Donald Trump next to him, which he painted. So I, being who I am, I talk to him. As I, in New York, I can talk to anybody. In San Francisco, I can't talk to anybody. It's a city of numb, a numb city. If you ask someone a, a stranger a question, they call the police. They think that there's something wrong with you, if you're even having talked to them. Here, bottom of michaelsavage.com. There's the bongo player right at Columbus Circle. The portrait of the president's president's family and, and Donald Trump. So I said to the, the, the drummer, I said, you like Donald Trump? So he looked at me and said, I like Donald Trump's money. Now that said everything to me. Listen to what I just said to you. Here's a black guy, itinerant beggar in the park, playing a drum, an artist, not bad. I can't do as good as he did. Big picture of Donald Trump, small, a smaller picture of the first family. And I said, you like Donald Trump? He said, I like his money. And I said, that's the election right there. End the story. Why? I told you this two weeks ago. I said even the poor will vote for Donald Trump because the poor would rather have a rich man for president than a schmuck like Bernie Sanders or a, a stumble bum like, uh, like the others they want to run. What do they want a communist to be president for? What the heck does Bernie Sanders know about an economy? Nothing other than how to rape it and sack it as a professor. Nothing, zero. The poor are not stupid. They're just poor. And don't confuse yourself if you have money that you're smart and if they have no money, they're stupid. It doesn't work that way. We're living in interesting times where each man literally has to save himself. We have no authority figures to believe in. We have no government to believe in. That's why I wrote Government Zero, and it's not an infomercial. Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. I'm not ready to talk about it at length. I will be in September. The book is on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. And I made a commitment, which I should repeat right now. All of the royalties that I make on that book, and I'll repeat it again, write it down. Any and all royalties I make on that book will be given to my Savage Scholarship Fund, 
for deserving college students going forward. That will be one of the things I leave as my legacy after my radio career.